So there was a path to get to the destination because it's a leakage, not a hijack. <coughs> Still, that affected you know, the customers because of the uh, delays, monitors, and you know, um, public blocks. So even Google made a mistake. Or oh, made a mistake. So why do we, we keep our seeing doing this? <laughs> because no one in, is in charge. Don't know. In the internet, we don't have policy. We need we need to help each other. We need to understand what else is doing in the internet and uh, what the best way to protect together to uh, make the internet working, right? Mm. Another thing works by rumor, right? right? Like, yes, I have this network in my network. Then, under here, I will help the neighbor, yes, he had that network. <laughs> <laughs> then, somehow, he believes the information. Then, uh, allow the packet to the destination, right? But uh, in this model, we need to assume we trust each other. We believe each other. There are no bad guy in the middle. There are no lie, right? Yeah, but uh, sometimes we made a mistake, right? <laughs> and also, routing is Dynamic, right? Variable. <coughs> the view of the network depends on where you are. <laughs> As I said, in the, uh, when Google made a mistake on, uh, by leaking, that affected Japan because they leaked the sub of the major uh, Japanese ISPs. But the, probably you didn't feel that much because it's happening in Japan. Right? So at that time, you have totally different view of the internet. That, it just works. But uh, from the Japanese uh, customer's point of view, it's badly affected. <laughs> they cannot use the internet. The internet is broken, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Internet is still working somehow. <laughs> <coughs> and the routing works in reverse. So I can tell about my network. And then the packet for the announcement, so in the bus. You can control your announcement by the, and then you can receive the packet. So it's an in the bus, right? And if you hear a uh, routing information from your neighbor, by that, you can send out the profit to the destination. So it's in the box. And there are no evil indication of the routing information. About routing update does not identify itself as evil or bad. So somehow, uh, we need to distinguish uh, the good one and the bad one. But how? It's a question. And because it's just so easy to do but in routing. It's just a command, right? You can originate any place you want. <coughs> even you can originate default route. It matches the entire internet. But still it's easy to originate in the default route, right? So it's highly recommended to put the loud filtering on your network, especially uh, on the edge, uh, where you have a uh, uh, internet connection with other uh, ASCs. And also, sometimes it's better to have loud filtering to your upstream. Your upstream may announce like a private address space to you. Or your upstream may turn it um, more specific 
a pure network. Right? So, yes, it's better to have a, a, such a, a lag filtering to protect your network. So we can use some prefix-based uh, filtering and the uh, AS fast-based uh, uh, filtering as well. So current uh, practice is when you receive the uh, 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 peering or uh, torrent request from your neighbor or customer, you can check some letter of authority, then put them some filter on your edge, then configure, then neighbor it up. Tools and techniques. GUIs. Have you ever used GUIs command? Yes. Yes? I, yes, I'm still using GUIs and it's a bit complicated. <laughs> but uh, there you can uh, find some hint related to the, uh, 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 the network. In this uh, case, uh, I get mom, it's an AP touring AP, <laughs> and then uh, uh, description is a uh, uh, prefix for AP touring lab, right? And uh, you can find some contact information. It's an email, uh, it's a training at APNIC.net. So it seems like this is actually um, maintained by APNIC, right? <coughs> and also, APNIC who is is uh, uh, including the uh, IRR, Internet Routing Registry, uh, beside the uh, IP allocation. So you can get the result uh, from the uh, APNIC IRR database. So it shows a uh, loud object here, then origin. It's an uh, intended as number of the uh, originator of the prefix. So this prefix should be uh, originated by this S number. Uh, yeah, yeah, we <laughs> tend to ask for a letter of authority uh, to check if the uh, neighbor or the customer actually uh, intend to uh, use the IP prefix or to have a peer with us. But it's easy to fake. Anyone can produce such kind of the letter nowadays. You have nice word or document software in your computer. You can fetch logo from the internet and printer or PDF. It's so easy to duplicate or produce certain fake um, information. Thanks to the uh, technology, right? <laughs> um, so, if um, your customer asks you to uh, announce uh, their own IP <coughs> claim from your network, it's a good idea to ask the customer, okay, yes, we will, but uh, you should um, register a uh, loud object. To indicating to indicate that you actually are uh, intending to announce the prefix by us. Right. So the uh, AP IRR, only the address holder can register loud object corresponding that they are uh, holding IP. So by that you can ensure that the prefix is actually owned by the customer. <coughs> so it's safer for you. Because if you announce the uh, 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 others of the fixes from your network, maybe you have a reputation risk. You are supposed to the uh, black or gray at ISP, so it's not good. So this is also protecting you from such a reputation risk as well. IRR, so 
that uh, you can uh, uh, use IRO to generate uh, loud filter uh, uh, rules by using some tools. There are a bunch of open source tools you can use uh, to uh, generate from the uh, IRR databases. <coughs> you can do that. It's easy to find nowadays. And uh, it can uh, uh, produce the loud uh, filtering uh, rule set uh, for your uh, system, iOS or Juniper or I don't know what about the input. But uh, yeah, it's possible. But it means the configuration is pretty similar. <coughs> but um, in the IRR, there are a bunch of uh, different problems. There are no single or three D model. The most popular IRR is RADB. Still, even though uh, we have a uh, API IRR, live IRR, and Affinity and Rapid as well. <laughs> so RIR is now operating IRR. Still, the RADP, the uh, independent entity IRR, is the most popular and the most uh, used IRR in the world. So it's hard to tell the information there is correct or not. Because in the I RADB, if you pay the uh, uh, registration fee, like um, 200 US dollar per year, you can create any record. Yes, you can record any. Is it any. Years or not? No. Okay. In the, uh, the it's coming. Yes. yes. Okay. If so, so we will discuss uh, this uh, later. But uh, if you have a lower, then based on the lower, if there is that wrong information there, the uh, filter. Or the other Yeah. You can create, but it's not visible from the outside. I'll say you can be now the matches there. So you can't use a lot of the matches. So I think you guys are going to have that idea. Yep, thank you. And they took their many different live objects. And the uh, naming scheme is uh, totally different on um, each uh, RIR. So if you use an A set, for example, to generate a, 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 a loud uh, filter rule, maybe it has a different information from the different IRR. <coughs> we, I see some conflict <laughs> before, like on A, It's a Bhutan case, yes. Bhutan Telecom they are set as an AS BT, British uh, Bhutan Telecom. And also at that time, British Telecom were using the uh, same uh, uh, name for their ASSET, ASBT, both British Telecom. So they have uh, some confusion and uh, uh, they had uh, uh, trouble, so the uh, Bhutan Telecom decided to change their uh, name of uh, ASSET at that time. And uh, there is a scaling issue as well. <coughs> so you can automate uh, 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 your uh, light filtering by using IRR by some tools. But uh, you better to check if you have a bunch of uh, huge change at the time. Right? Maybe. Uh, you fail to fetch some important information from IR, or uh, there is some uh, trouble in a system. So, if you can automate uh, this kind of task, but uh, better to watch what's happening. So, like a huge teleco uh, entity uh, global network, they send them an uh, email each time they uh, update the uh, filtering. So, okay. yep. there, there is no any authority uh, for verifying those IRR rules? No. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <coughs> but then, uh, APNIC IR, as I said, APNIC IR uh, or uh, 
as a uh, RIR regional internet registry based <laughs> yeah. IRR, they then uh, some uh, restriction like um, only the uh, IP address holder can issue the uh, corresponding cloud object. Yes. So it's right. safer. Yes. But as RADB is still the most popular uh, IRR, and there we can trust. No authority. So how can we identify good cloud administration? Yes? Maybe we can use digital signature. Probably we did some quick graphing basics and the uh, public key, right? Yeah. Good, good. So you know the concept of private key and public key, right? <coughs> private key to sign the authority, then public key to validate uh, the authority. So this is a common technique nowadays. We use this technique to provide the DMSSEC, SSH, TLS, yes. almost everything, and PGP as well. Right. So in the uh, uh, IP allocation, how do we build a chain of trust? I think most of the IP um, address numbers are allocated based on this key. So IANA still keeps the uh, uh, unused space, but it's uh, for IP before it's gone. They still have IP basics there. Then distribute on regional internet registry uh, in our region is empty. Yes. Then they distribute uh, the uh, IP number resources to us, as in ISP, or in our region we have a, a concept of NIR, it's a national internet registry. Uh, because <coughs> before it was established, there wasn't JPN. Yes, JPN. Um, established before 18 years. So we have our own uh, internet ministry at that time. So now it's an, uh, under the same umbrella. Uh, so it's in, in this hierarchy model. So we can use this allocation path as a chain of path because they maintain the registration information, right? which IP number is allocated who? Based on that, we can put some class. I do. So in currently we have five RIRs airing for all US and uh, Northern American, um, offering for Africa. Uh, AP for Asia Park and Latin for Middle and uh, uh, Latin American area, uh, right? And CC for the uh, uh, Europe and also uh, Russia, Ukraine. So AP uh, uh, provider uh, uh, CA, certificate authority. Then. I can uh, uh, sign or give it uh, uh, authority uh, to the NMR or uh, end user. So if we give such kind of the trust chain, right, if I have a public key of APUPCA, I can buy it all for this certificate because it's signed by the parents and then for the agent and then by the information is uh, actually uh, validated by using this trust path. So this is a, a similar idea than DNS and the DLS as well. So 
Hungary are part of all the same time new service that hold <coughs> all the resources they have in the industry. The root certificate signed by a uh, resource certificate for the end order allocation. Right. So in the previous slide, the ABD signed the end order is certificate. And the entity is certificate like a uh, 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 certificate issued by uh, an entity can be uh, validated by using this trust chain. <coughs> so based on this trust chain, we can develop new applications. It is RPTI. So this is Model is RPTI. Based on RPTI, we can have many uh, more applications. <coughs> so ROA and uh, <coughs> ROV is one of the, those applications. Chain trust. Yeah, it's a little too detailed. <coughs> uh, <coughs> So based on the X.509, the standard, uh, RFC extended uh, the, the specification to uh, have the information uh, related to the uh, IP resources, like the S, uh, S number, and also IPv4, IPv6 addresses in the uh, certificate. resources, as number, and the uh, IP address to B, it's maybe you. So, if you need to choose the resource certificate that binds the uh, allocated address with your public key, all signed by if you need private key, right? The resource certificate for the holder of the private key is the legitimate holder of the number resource. So we did a uh, similar uh, 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 story during the public key authentication, right? Now, loud origin authentication, lower. Now, you can now sign authorities using its private key. Right? For loading, the address folder can be authorized as network or S number to originate a route and sign this permission is private key. Right? So it's a, just a digital certificate. The content is a prefix and S number signed by your private key. And others can validate by using the uh, APNIC private public key. Then for the first of chain, then finally your issue law is valid. So it's a dictionary signed object.
become issue lower as you rise. And multiple lower ones can exist for the same things. So you can issue the lower for your network, the lower for your uh, uh, some emergency use. You can issue multiple rewards. Uh, it's an, also important when uh, your customer, let's say, they have own business, they want to change ISP, then the originator of the network will be changed. But uh, if you require the atomic operation, it's a little difficult. So in that case, the customer can issue two rewards. So one for existing, one for the uh, next uh, ISP, right? Then exist together for the same time. Then move the network. Then delete the previous reward. So this is a, 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 a function with such a consideration. So what can RPTI do? <coughs> So authentic proof, who is the uh, owner of an address, and identify which person have the permission from the holder to originate the address, right? So as it's a digital sign, it's computer friendly. You can bring your own tool. Or you can use existing <coughs> tools as well. Issuing party, so it's a component of RPTI. And uh, yeah, some technical talks behind. You can use my uh, portal to issue your law. Yes. It's the most important <laughs> part of this talk. And behind that, they have uh, some system to reach your own <laughs> and uh, to publish the information uh, through the uh, repository of IPNIC. And relying party, so it's a user of RPTI, uh, like an other ISP, uh, who, is, uh, who wants to validate the prefixes by using RPTI. They catch information from the repositories uh, operated by any or, or sometimes LIRs. So ISPs can uh, uh, operate <coughs> uh, repositories you want. Or uh, you can just use the APNIC system to issue all. So uh, the user uh, fetches uh, information from repository by using uh, RSync or uh, RRDP. Then uh, he or she will uh, be an uh, validated cache there. <coughs> As I said, uh, there are two models. Hosted model is uh, to use uh, APNIC or uh, IR uh, system to issue your work. It's easier. I recommend. I tried to build all GA, but uh, just, just for fun, but <laughs> from the operational point of view, it's anywhere. You need to check the uh, newer uh, uh, standards, also need to check uh, the vulnerabilities, and also you need to make sure it's reliable, because others will fake information from your repository, right? So for us, each year, to use it in the system uh, to uh, issue your law. But uh, you, if you really want, you can have uh, your own uh, uh, certificate authority uh, and then ask APNIC to delegate authority uh, so that uh, you can create own law there. But uh, it's not easy. And uh, some NRLs are doing that. So like a JP. They have own GA because uh, they have a bunch of uh, different uh, uh, customers and they, uh, is, they are operating the uh, GA by their own. 
So now it's origin variation. So now we have uh, RP here and, and the other one. So let's use uh, it to uh, prevent the hijacks. Uh, so in this case, I am announcing uh, IPv4 prefix slash 48 to the internet. And somehow you receive the uh, like announcement originated by me. Right? We are here. This guy, this malicious guy, tried to hijack me. <coughs> so this is starting to announce the same prefix to the neighbor. And somehow this neighbor found the information to you. So you receive two digit information from different parts. So as the prefix length is the same, so let's see the AS performance. This has two S numbers in the S pass. This has three in the S pass. So this means that means I lose. But you have some idea to use RPTI. So get the information from the repository and the validate and the data or, or validated cache here, then send the information to your router. Now your router knows the uh, information based on the lower. So this prefix should be announced from this S number. Based on that information, you can tell, hmm, this announcement has a, a small number of A's in the A's pass, but the originating A's number is different from the information in the lower. So it's invalid. Right? Uh, but then another uh, information uh, linked from this pass has the uh, uh, right originator as number in the AS pass. So this should be valid. So based on this uh, uh, matching status, you can filter or you can put a lower preference for the wrong information. Like a body. 
And then you will see that this kind of identity announcement of the ASNet, okay, let's say, starting with this. ASNet is the same, okay, prefix is the same as the uh, prefix in the lower, so it's valid. ASN is the same as the lower, so it's okay. The prefix is 10, the 0, the 128, slash 17. It's a sub prefix or a more specific of this prefix. Is it okay? Yeah. Because of the max length, right? And this one, so what's wrong? Yes, yeah, okay. SN is different from the uh, information in the world, so it's invalid. Yes. Maybe the case of uh, someone else is trying to hijack Unicode. Yes. So how about um, this? <laughs> this is for the maximum length. Maximum length of, of That's this. true. So this S is OK, but the prefix is not 24. It's Longer than the maximum length, even if it's a more specific in the previous. So it's considered as invalid. Because it's by right here and the, 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 the rule. And the final one. The <coughs> same prefix is not found in the DB. So you cannot tell it's good or bad. No idea. So not found. Good. So the in the uh, uh, RPT arrow rule, so your router once configured with the uh, uh, validation. It can decide or it, it can tell you uh, by not found or invalid. That's all. They do nothing. It's your policy. What to do then next? It's up to you. Maybe you can modify preference. Right? Put a higher local preference for uh, valid information. Then not found, and the most uh, not preferable information should be invalid. So, uh, if you are comfortable, you can just drop invalid, which is what we are doing now at IIJ. Yes, we are dropping invalid. Yes. Easy. Anyone dropping invalid here? Anyone dropping invalid here on network? So, 
in a uh, uh, time far away can validate the origin as number of the analysis. Not the path. If you have a malicious S number in the middle, still it's possible to hijack. So there is a discussion to protect the eighth path by signing the announcement by the routers. But it's a future. <laughs> future, future. Probably after my death. <laughs> But then this one may be promising. ASPA. <laughs> AS Provider Authentication. So it's a simple um, uh, object. Its statement is simple. So from your AS number, it indicates which AS is your upstream. That's it. So you can indicate, yes, uh, Hurricane is our upstream. You can uh, create an uh, SPA by indicating Hurricane's S number as an upstream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By this, probably in the future, we can prevent that region. Because by uh, collecting such information, we can tell which S is upstream of the other S. Right? Based on that information, if S path looks a bit strange from certain S relationships, then probably yeah, we can the preference for filter such information. So ASPA is promising, So, but it's not available right now. So let's see if it actually works for future. Okay, coming. Yep, thank you. Received an uh, IP address from APD. Right? You can log into my APD portal, then you will find resource certification RTPI section there. Asante, Ojan, my APD portal takes us. After us, after us, all it's enough. It's okay. But uh, you shouldn't do this right now. <laughs> if you are comfortable with RTPI concept, then you can actually issue your uh, law. Because it's a strong statement about your announcement. If you put the wrong information there, you have filtered that from the internet. Right? So 
was the uh, reading the uh, uh, RPKI, you should go to the uh, life management and the life section. Then, by clicking this button here, you can issue your rule. So you need to type in uh, the, the prefix here, your intended and the originator ice number here, and uh, this is the maximum uh, uh, prefix names. And check rule name. By checking this, this system will generate rule for you. So before, you don't know about the current implementation. Before, if you need to use the uh, existing BGP announcement to fill this origin S number automatically, because based on the existing BGP announcement, you can tell, maybe your S number is this one. It's easy. But then, once before, during the 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 the, the epic <laughs> how can I say it? during the lower uh, creation BGP hijack was coming. Yes, during the lower creation. So the system see two different origin S from the BGP table, because someone else was hijacking the planes. So that was uh, confusable. <laughs> if you create a wrong information there, <laughs> you are filtered out. So now, if you need to decide to uh, not put the uh, uh, origin S number by default, I think. The same for IPv4. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, if you check the who is uh, option here, it will generate a loud object in the iCard form. <laughs> so by clicking the translate the lower, the system automatically generate the lower for you. Okay? Your lower is Ready. Then you can check your lower by using the uh, some other tools. Of course, you can fetch the uh, digital certificate uh, from the Epinic uh, publication server by yourself. But uh, as it's an X.509, you need to use an open SSL command to decrypt uh, the information and check the uh, signatures and by yourself. So it's written. Uh, work. So you can use some tools like RPK by interact.net or RPK the cloudflare.com or BGP uh, HE.net as well. So you 
you have three doors, is that correct? I created uh, one for a test to this day and another for a test to this day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks good. Then, here is some uh, trust bundle, so the chain trust information. Under the AP trust counter, um, <coughs> there are intermediators with, then it's a neural CA here, and by using the AP system, of course, but then we need to do a few neurons. This is a Hurricane's estimation. Uh, tools in the internet. So by using uh, this tool, you can uh, confirm that your creation was uh, sufficient to your announcement. And uh, if you found, find that some wrong or... Uh, <laughs> so this is not your ASM, right? No. So this is the older ASM. That's the nearest ASM. Oh, okay. Yeah. So 
uh, yes, uh, you can easily create your uh, logo, <laughs> but uh, make sure you don't have um, any unintentional invalids. You can use a uh, uh, command uh, and also uh, uh, check the uh, uh, lower uh, status. <coughs> So if that, yeah, it's you can still use the uh, GUIs like um, web uh, services to check your lower and your analysis. <coughs> So global lower stuff, um, people are, are issuing the lower, it's a mechanism, very good. Uh, uh, have a tool to decrypt 
the lower and the other side of the face. Great tool. to propagate the uh, uh, RPKI uh, 
uh, our brief decision by the GP. But uh, I tend to use a um, standard uh, BGP committee to carry such information. Put the tag by using BGP committee if it's an invite or a buy or unknown. Because I think in IIK we are using Juniper and the system well, and uh, we have different OSs. So to, uh, to, to have a reliable operation, so, if we put an AS0 in lower, it has a special meaning. It's stating that no one should announce the prefix. So, shouldn't exist in the global routing area. Maybe it's a good idea uh, for those IHPs. They are using a slash 24 or slash 22 on the IHP segment. Maybe they can put an S0 for those prefix to prevent the accident for each thing. Just when some other announce the uh, more specific of the IHP segment, that may affect or affect your, your network. Right? You get such an option. This is the use case of the S0 our ways. But then um, it's over uh, written by another law. If it has a S number there, other than S0. So if there's um, one of the, 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 the uh, Matching uh, lower, it considers the value. Right? Because you can have a multiple lower for the prefix. If one of those matches in an existing announcement, it considered as a value. And then he decided to uh, put an uh, 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 SL lower for. Uh, the existing uh, free pool of ABNIC because it's an, just a pool not distributed yet and uh, to use the information you need to use a special trust and uh, information so there is the information there any Question? And uh, afternoon, we will have an uh, actual demo, right? Yes. Of our After lunch. Yes. Ten? Consider the best 
then still the router keeps the test pass as the same as before. If it receives the same time, then uh, next idea will be easy. Idea this? Neighbor ID, right? Router ID, yes. Neighbor ID. So it's in a PGP spec. And also up to that implementation. <laughs> A little more complex with uh, the user is putting as right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's why it's better to have more peers with your competitors and partners. That makes your S pass shorter. Then possible to win over the uh, hijacked one. So I I recommend to peer as much as possible to protect your network. Any other questions? So, Shayan, is, is it time to go for break? Any other instruction for the lunch break? Yes. Yes, please. <laughs>